Hey, it's Chris. Thanks for clicking on this video. This is just a clip from our full interview, which is available right now on my podcast, Insight with Chris Van Vliet. Click the link down below to listen to it wherever you get your podcasts. After, uh, what was it, April 15th, the, uh, the release day, uh, you know, I was in contact with, with so many different uh, people and promotions and the AEW thing worked out first. And that was only for like a couple dates. That's all we agreed upon was, I think it was like two dynamites and a pay-per-view. I think I did like one more dynamite and AW was awesome. It was fun. It was great, but I was in such a long-term relationship. I didn't want to just jump into another relationship with anybody really. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, like I was in, enjoying the free time at home, uh, building the podcast and time just kind of, it flew by, you know, they say like time flies when you're having fun. Like I was having so much fun with this podcast thing. It's like the end of December. And I'm thinking like, wow, I haven't been in a ring since September. Like, not only have I not had a match in September, I haven't even been in a ring. So that's when I was like, you know, what? I should probably start like at least like go to a flat max and take a bump or two. You know what I'm saying? And before I knew it, uh, I got a, a text. It was a Friday before Hard to Kill saying, hey, do you want to come to work tomorrow? And I said, you know what? Always ready. Yeah. And that's exactly what I wrote back. Always ready. Uh, it, it just kind of worked out. You know, there was no like real plan beforehand. Of course, I had been in talks with them for a couple of months, but it was yeah. nothing like concrete. Uh, and it just kind of worked out. So you're happy being a free agent. You can wrestle wherever you want to wrestle. Yeah. And for now, I think it's, it's awesome for me, especially with the, the, the climate for the, the wrestling business, the world, we don't know what's going on. So I like to be able to bounce around and do whatever I want to do right now. Um, and I also think like with this podcast thing, like that is my, not my number one goal. Cause of course wrestling is my number one, but it's like, it's like really close. Like I, yeah. I love doing it. It's so much fun. Um, and like the community that we've built and it's been successful with live shows and, and podcasts and merch and now YouTube stuff and Twitch stuff. It's just like, I want to be able to do everything. Yeah. So there's also longevity in podcasting. You can podcast <laughs> when you're 80. You probably right. can't wrestle when you're 80. Right. right. I mean, wrestling is the, the ultimate goal, the ultimate dream but the podcasting has been so creatively fulfilling. When you debuted in AEW, I think you turned a lot of heads because people were like, I knew Zack Ryder was jacked, mm. but Matt Cardona is beyond jacked now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, we might've talked about this in the last, uh, or I don't know when do we, I think maybe we were just DMing about this, but like, I was always the same size, like maybe throughout like my 15 year career, like in WWE, like I gained a little bit of size, but I don't know, I, for me, like, I would even that day at AW, I was like, oh man, I'm not looking at my, I'm not looking at my best. But then like everyone like made it seem like I was the warlord. I was like, well, I guess perception's reality that that's fine with me. Like, yeah, I'm not, <laughs> not going to complain. But really, nothing really changed. So like as you sit here right now, how much do you weigh? Probably like two fifteen, two twenty. It's that's right really now. solid though. It's like three fifteen p.m. I had a flight this morning, so I didn't eat enough today. So maybe <laughs> I'm probably like two seventeen. Okay, uh, two seventeen on the yeah. dot. Probably two seventeen. But it's interesting hearing you explain the situation with AEW because a lot of wrestling fans will go, well, Matt's not on AEW anymore. Like what happened? Like, why would they get rid of him? Right. And you explaining like, no, that's not what I was looking for at that time. It was just yeah. cool to go in and do a couple of dates. Yeah. And, and, and the, that's not saying I'll never want to go back. Yeah. You know, it's like, it was just, uh, you know, I have a very great relationship with Cody, obviously Tony sure. Khan, everyone was super cool when I was there and I, I loved my, my cup of coffee there. It was awesome. Yeah. I got a t-shirt. I was on pay-per-view. I was on dynamite. It was awesome. Uh, everyone was super cool there and it's a great place. I mean, I mean, look at, look at Wednesday night, the Wednesday night wars. Everyone's loving AEW. Uh, I love it too. Um, but I'm not saying I won't go back. It's yeah. just, we only signed for, for that particular thing. And that was it. But you've also, now you're in a company. Now you're working for impact where there's a lot of legacy there. Like I was a massive TNA fan beginning in like, oh, four, oh, five, oh, six. And like, you know, Samoa Joe, right. Christopher Daniels, AJ Styles. And now you're part of that legacy. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty wild that it's been around for almost 20 years, if not 20 years, right? Yeah. It's pretty nuts. And all the things that they have done and all the guys they have found. Uh, and I just think impact right now is, is a great fit for me uh because like you know like um i feel like impacts have had highs and lows well documented and myself included and i feel like right now we're both like on the rise on the up and up and i think we're a perfect fit and i also think i'm gonna get the most opportunity to impact right now so, so when you look at when you look at the landscape and impact who are you looking forward to you know get mixing it up with 
Yeah. So, I mean, Ace Austin, night one, we had a little match. Yeah, and I could yeah. just tell right away, I'm like, this kid's got it. Um, you know, he, he's just a pro. And I think in five years, he's going to be a name that everybody's talking about. But there's so many hungry guys on that roster and so many guys I've never really wrestled. Like, I've never wrestled Moose or Eddie Edwards, uh, Rich Swan, uh, Chris Bay, so many guys. Uh, or guys like Gals and Anderson, who I have wrestled, but never really, or Eric Young who I've wrestled before, but never really with the time or the spotlight. Uh, and then, of course, there's Brian Myers there. If he wants, I don't want to team with the guy ever again, but if he wants to fight, maybe we'll fight. <laughs> you know, you mentioned the Good Brothers. You mentioned Gallows and Anderson. I feel like you have so much in common with them with all of the stuff that you're doing outside of wrestling. I, I just think they get it. And they're, they, they're somebody who they're not just going to sit around and wait for opportunities. You got to create your own opportunities, make your own, especially now, when like we have the the freedom to, you know, go out and do it, like try to do whatever you can. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, I mean, I'm not saying throw everything against the wall, see what sticks because you want to have like quality products out there or whatever you put your name to, you know, has yeah. to, has to make sense for you and your brand. I, oh God, I hate that, that word brand. I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> no, but, you are a brand now. Right. But you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, um, it, it's just great to just try all these different things and whether, you know, the good brothers and, the major wrestling fair podcast had that connection with super seven and super seven makes some of the greatest toys action figures out there. So when those uh, good brothers or Matt and Brian figures come out in the market, it's going to like, you know, Mattel figures are great. AW Jasper figures are great, but these super seven figures are going to be better. Sorry. Yeah. guys. 